My name is Tony Amossi. I'm the president of the Association of British Investigators, speaking to you from the city of York at the annual general meeting of the association's 99th year since its existence. We're here uh, in large numbers to enjoy the evening's banquet after a day of business. Our honoured guest will be James Scott, the president of the local law society, and it will be uh, an endorsement, a second endorsement, of the relationship between the association and the Law Society, the Law Society itself having endorsed the association two years ago. We're very excited about uh, the future of uh, the association and indeed the industry as a whole, which uh, many people will be following because of the Leveson Inquiry and the Parliamentary Home Affairs Select Committee Inquiry, following some uh, rather unfortunate scandals that triggered off these inquiries. But those inquiries are nothing to do with the uh, association or its members or the work that we do, which is what we would like to think as the professional side of an industry that is long overdue regulation. And we are all now quite excited that this is imminent.
So we've just had a brief look back at our conference this year in the city of York, but now let's look forward to next year. For most, 2013 will be just another year, but for our association it really will be something special, as in April 2013 this association celebrates 100 years since its first foundations were laid. So how did it all start? Back in 1908, a police chief inspector by the name of Harry Smale retired from Scotland Yard and started a detective agency in London. As private detective agencies grew in the area, Harry Smale decided to call a meeting. His idea was to form a small group or organisation to represent the industry. And after further discussions, in 1913, the very first Private Detective Association was born. The name they chose? The British Detectives Association. Unfortunately, after just one year, the association was suspended with the outbreak of World War I in 1914, when most members were recalled to the police force or enlisted in the British Armed Forces. When the war ended, the association was reformed, and in 1919, Records show that 85% of private detectives' work was in divorce cases. I suppose hardly surprising after four successive years of war when the men folk were away and the women folk didn't know whether they were ever going to come back. And of course many didn't. And those that did, many of them were badly traumatised. Records show at that time that the association tried to obtain formal recognition by charter or licensing sound familiar. There was another further interruption during World War II and the association was reformed again in 1945. In 1952 the British Detectives Association merged with the Federation of British Detectives. The president at that time was a Mr S Scott known as Scott of Scotland Yard and this gentleman was the father of our, of our very own Zena Scott Archer. Around that time the association again attempted to get formal recognition and sent a delegation of members to the Houses of Parliament. In the 1960s certain MPs tried to get a bill passed through the Houses of Parliament for, the, for private investigators but again to no avail. At this time those efforts were supported by one particular member, a Peter Himes. 
Peter Himes at the time wrote a very, very interesting report to the Home Office, and I quote, This report is very dear to my heart, for I have personally been very active since 1968 in efforts to have some government control over my profession. The Divorce Bible Raiden has for many years, when describing the testimony of a single witness, pointed out to its readers that the court looked with great care on the evidence of paid detectives. The advice is now no longer given and private investigators like to think that the legal world at last recognises the fact that they follow an honourable profession where the majority of investigators adhere to a code of ethics. It is however possible in the United Kingdom for a person to be released from prison today and for him to co commence business as a private investigator tomorrow. He could bribe people to obtain information. He could commit burglary to obtain information. He could enter into a conspiracy to pervert the natural course of justice by falsifying the evidence. There have been several moves to try to legitimise the situation and I will always continue with those efforts. Peter's words are as true today as they were all those years ago. We owe a great debt to our forefathers, Harry Smale. All these great people who worked so diligently and laid a foundation. People like the late Frank Martin, who bequeathed the property to his beloved ABI and who founded the ABI Benevolent Fund. These are the people who lay the foundations on which we continue to work today. The World Association of Detectives, WAD. There's a fraternity between our associations and has been for many years. The past presidents, too many to mention, who have worked so diligently over successive years. The elected members of the governing council and the regional branch officers, who have all given their time free for the benefit of all other members. So there we have a potted history of the ABI and the reason why we'd like you all to join with us in our celebrations in April 2013 in London. The three-day event will give you ample time to explore London. Visit the Sherlock Holmes Museum in Baker Street. Take a trip on the River Thames and see the Tower of London, Tower Bridge, HMS Belfast and the London Eye. Stop and have a traditional English beer at the Sherlock Holmes pub near Trafalgar Square. London has something to offer for everyone. The organised events include a drinks reception at the House of Lords, where you will have privileged access to the famous Houses of Parliament. A reception on HMS Belfast, where you can enjoy socialising with colleagues over drinks and canopies. Then explore this famous nine-deck World War II veteran warship. After a full business convention at the famous Grand Connaught Rooms on the final day, the formal farewell banquet in the wonderful Grand Hall promises to be a night to remember, with traditional toasts and annual award presentations. The ABI patron, Colin Dexter, author of the famous TV series Inspector Morse, will hopefully be with us. During dinner and beyond, we'll enjoy the live music from the populous Joe Strand and friends. The opportunity to have a business presence by sponsorship at this once in a lifetime event is still available. Details and sponsorship forms should be available immediately after this presentation or from the ABI website www.theabi.org.uk. Finally, thanks to all our sponsors who have already shown their support and whose details are already displayed on the ABI website centenary page. Why not join them? You and your company can be part of history in the making. So see you in London.